Yeah, and, and that's why my focus when I'm engaging these guys in debates, I'll, I'll say for sake of argument, let, let's stick with the 96%. That's fine. Still quite a bit. Then I'll take them to the Y chromosome and I'll say, but there's no discrepancy here. Right from your own literature, firstly, the chimpanzee Y chromosome is half the size as the human Y, Mike. There's a specific kind of DNA called heterochromatin. It's this densely packed kind of DNA that comprises uh, repetitive sequences like satellite DNA. The chimpanzee doesn't even have it in its Y chromosome. So apparently it lost the entirety of its heterochromatic arm. And so to me, these are massive differences that can discriminate between the models. We as creationists, we can account for them. Humans and chimps aren't related, but to the evolutionists, they're in a difficult spot, aren't they? Because now they have to explain since the split, Apparently humans and chimps go back to a common ancestor roughly 6 million years ago. They split. How did all those differences accumulate in the Y chromosome? All we get, Mike, or what? Just so stories. Yeah. Because the, the, can you imagine the amount of um, bad mutations, the genetic load of all of those in 6 million years? We'd be extinct. Right. So right. they don't think that as much because... Uh, the enormous, over 99% of all known mutations are either detrimental or neutral. That doesn't, and it's better 99.9%. But uh, the genetic load of bad ones, and what's going to select them out? The environment doesn't select anything to get away from. Get rid of. Uh, so that's the problem. 